Who's Arizona State going to upset this year? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on wrestling fans? My name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling where I do a lineup preview on D1 College Wrestling every single week. Please let me know in the comments below who you want to see next. But this week we're talking all about Arizona State, the team that upset Penn State on their massive, massive win streak which was absolutely incredible. Nobody really saw it coming. So could the team do that again this year? I will dive through with the lineup 125 all the way through heavyweight and there is a great great heavyweight that Arizona State has, which I'm excited to see how he does. So first of all, who is Arizona State losing? Well, of course, unfortunately, they're losing Zahid Valencia, who was their big dog. I mean, he was supposed, he was going to be the I mean, two-time national champion, could have potentially won it last year had the things not gone down that did go down with him, uh, but a solid wrestler nonetheless. You also, They're also losing Josh Shields, Josh Maruka, Josh Kramer, the three Joshes, and Tanner Hall. They also lost Adam Buscello, who was a recruit, was at Penn State, then Arizona State, now back at Penn State, just all over the board. But who do we have? First of all, starting off at 125 pounds, a few guys here between Nick Ramo and Alan Valenzuela, uh, the Top dog here is Brandon Courtney, but as far as the other other two guys go, Nick Ramo, top t- top sixty recruit in two thousand nineteen, and a multiple time New Jersey state champion, coming in as a redshirt freshman, was twelve and twelve last season. Uh, you could see him move up or down, just kind of depends whether he goes twenty five, thirty three, depending where he fits in best in the lineup. All the matches that he wrestled in the Pac twelve last year, he actually won, and he actually took second at the Reno Tournament of Champions, uh, which was a little bit less of a stacked field last year, but still, nonetheless, that's very impressive. Uh, he does have a win over uh, Alan, Aaron Valenzuela, excuse me, uh, so he would probably get the spot here, but Brandon Courtney is going to be most likely to start at 125 with a 22 and 5 record last year the junior comes in ranked number eight in the 2020-21 season he was a Pac-12 champ last year with solid wins over Alex Mackle of Iowa State, Brody Teske of Northern Iowa. Uh, he did have a couple of losses on the season, including to Devin Schroeder and Brandon Patesel, but he had a solid season. Uh, probably his best tournament besides Pac-12 was Cliff Keen Las Vegas, where he took six. Look for a great season from Brandon Courtney. Now, the next guy that is kind of exciting, the next weight is 133 pounds. And this is one of the most stacked weights for Arizona State right now. Uh, between 33 to 49, I mean, they are just loaded with talent. And a couple of these guys, you know, a couple of these guys wrestled some opens, but first guy I want to touch on is Cleveland Belton. Uh, he's a redshirt freshman coming in this year, two-time undefeated California State champion from St. John Bosco. If that school sounds familiar to Arizona State fans, that's because that's also where the Valencias were from. Uh, you can see the connection there. Now, he didn't compete last year for some unknown reason, but we'll see what he does this year. Josiah Klein's another guy who's injured last season, uh, but he actually plays fourth at Pac-12s in the past in 2019. You could see him bump up to 141, could see him stay at 33 again depending on where he fits into the lineup now he has beat out Josh Kramer in the past who was the starter here last year but likely the guy who's going to be starting here is Michael McGee Michael McGee was undefeated last year and he took a redshirt year but he is actually a junior now he's transferring out of Old Dominion which you know unfortunately that program shut down he transferred there to uh, now Arizona State at 133 pounds he's ranked number 17 in the country right now in the preseason a two-time MAC champ in NCAA qualifier. I see him doing very, very well for the Sun Devils. At 141 pounds, again, another pretty packed weight. Um, Two guys I want to talk about first, uh, Navante Demison and Corey Crooks. Crooks uh, was actually the starter here last year at 141 pounds, so you could see him start again this year. He actually beat out Demison in the past. He beat him out at Journeyman last year. Now, De- Demison actually beat Crooks out in the wrestle-off last year, so they've kind of flip-flopped all around. We'll see who fits in best in the lineup. Uh, Crooks is, is a senior, whereas Demison is a junior. Now, the guy who I believe is going to start above those guys, though, is actually Jordan in Cleveland, and we'll see what happens at the rest off, see what happens when things uh, kind of come to fruition by the time the fall comes around, but Cleveland is from Pennsylvania, a three-time Pennsylvania State Champion of Northampton, PA. He was 129-6, and six, a beast of the East placer, and escaped the Rock Champion, And I, which those two are some of the top 
10 tournaments out of any high school tournament. So the place of those is very, very impressive. Now, he committed as a freshman to Arizona State, and he stuck with his commitment, which you don't necessarily see a lot. You see a lot of flip-flops sometimes, but uh, last year he wrestled a little bit of the season, was 3-1. and one. I see him starting at 141 next year. At 49, this is kind of where we get to the end of our like stacked up weights. And then we start, you know, still have a couple guys, still have some depth, but a lot of depth in these last few weights. Uh, we have a few guys here. The real guy who I think um, is going to be the starter here, though, is going to be Jesse Vasquez. Uh, a couple of these guys are redshirt freshmen, freshmen, uh, and, and Dylan Olray is actually a senior, but Vasquez is taking over for Josh Maruka, who wrestled 149 last year for the Sun Devils, a solid, solid wrestler in Josh Maruka. Now, Vasquez is actually a four-time California State champion, uh, and he it was between Arizona State and Iowa, so that shows you the type of talent that he had. I mean, Iowa was looking out for him, and now he ended up committing to Arizona State, which is impressive. He was a top 25 recruit in the class of 2020, so he would probably be coming in this year if he doesn't take a redshirt year, which... I think that Arizona State kind of needs him this year. I think they can make a heavy, solid season if he ends up making the lineup and doesn't take that redshirt this year. Uh, and Arizona State can bring somebody else in in the future where he can take that redshirt year in the future, potentially. So that's who I think starting at 49. But at 57, now we're halfway through. Ja'Cory Teamer, Hunter Balk, and Alex Torres. Torres wrestled a couple opens last year. Same with Hunter Balk. Um, now, Balk actually lost to Teamer last year in the wrestle-off, and that's why I think Teamer is actually going to be the starter yet again as a sophomore. Had a 17-5 and record last year. He's number 11 ranked at 157 pounds coming into the season. Now, 57 is tough towards the top, but I think Teamer has kind of made his way, made his mark last season. And I think he'll continue to do that coming into next season. Now, he's a Pac-12 champ last year, undefeated in the Pac-12 out of all of his matches that he wrestled at the Cliff in Las Vegas as just a freshman. He placed eighth place. Very impressive as a freshman and had solid wins over Bill Pfeiffer of Penn State, Elijah Cleary, A.C. Headley of North Carolina, Josh Humphrey of Lehigh. Uh, now, he did have a, a loss to Ryan Deacon and David Carr, who were some of the top guys at the weight, but uh, Nonetheless, decent matches he had with them, and I think he can make a real claim for a you know potential All American spot this year because I, Arizona State doesn't really have any All Americans coming back. They had some guys who wrestled well at national tournaments, but didn't get the chance last year to see how they were going to do. Now it's 65 here. This is interesting. We could see this guy start. We could maybe see him bump up, and that's Anthony Valencia. Now Valencia was 22 and six last year, but that was at 174 pounds. Uh, of course, we know he wrestled there. Last year at 165, the Sun Devils had Josh Shields, which is a tough loss for them, of course. Um, now, Valencia is actually number five at 174, and he had some solid wins last year. He's had some losses, had some wins. You know, his losses to Dylan Lighty, Devin Skatska, Mark Hall, uh, Bryce Steyer, as well as Kayla Romero. Those are all tough losses, but if we see him 74, you know, the reason... I'm saying he's at 65. Is This is actually where he's wrestled his first three seasons of college. Uh, until last year, he decided to bump up to 74 in order to get into the lineup. Once his brother, once his brother Zahid bumped up to 184, they were both in the lineup. Now, we could see him at 65. We could see him at 74. Uh, Valencia was a Pac-12 champion, and he, and he actually pinned... Alex Marinelli at Midlands a couple of years ago in 2017. So just saying in, in 2017, he did pin Alex Marinelli. I'm not saying that would happen again by any means, but uh, he also has wins over a couple of impressive guys in Jacob Wenzel of Pitt, as well as uh, Logan Massa, who's a top ranked guy. So Anthony Valencia is going to be probably, a, I mean, a captain of the team, a very solid wrestler for the Sun Devils. On the 174, like I said, could see Valencia, but could also see Trey Munez or Josh Nummer. Uh, Nummer wrestled a couple of opens last year, whereas Trey Munez was a top recruit in 2019, wrestled last year at a 13 and two record overall so solid record um no notable wins or really losses just you know solid season for him he's a california state champion uh and i think he's going to be the starter at 174 here not a lot much more to say there we'll see how he does um taking over at that weight at 184 this is the
the big way. You know, losing Zahid Valencia at 184 was a blow to the Sun Devils at the end of the season, and it's going to be a blow to them again this year. Now, the starter here last year was Cade Belshay, who actually placed third in the Pac-12 last year with some wins and losses overall in the Pac-12. He wrestled off at 197 pounds, so... You could see him bump up, but I doubt it. I think he's going to stay down here at 184 where he feels more comfortable. Now, you also have Zane Coleman coming in as a redshirt freshman who's a four-time Oklahoma State champion. You also have Austin Clayton, a junior who's 18 and 10 last season. He wrestled a bunch of Opens, Reno, uh, Southern Scuffle, the Edinburgh Open. But uh, overall, I think Cade Belcher is probably going to get the starting spot again here at 184. We'll see that wrestle off between Coleman and Belcher, see what ends up happening there. But that's just my prediction for that spot. At 197, this is an exciting weight. And if you're in Arizona State, or even if you're just a, an excited, uh, you like watching the upper weights, uh, 197 is a great weight to watch for Cordell Norfleet. Uh, we also have a couple of other guys who are mostly going to be uh, the backups. We also had a couple of, of opens last year. And that's Brady, uh, Gillen, Daniel, Chad Porter, who are both juniors, uh, wrestled some Opens last year. And then Jacob Goods coming in as a redshirt freshman, was 3-4 and four last year. And he's, he's a California State champion. You see that Arizona State likes to recruit out west, which makes a little bit of sense, you know, uh, recruiting those guys out there. Get it, being able to reel them in. But Cordell Norfleet, number eight ranked at 197 pounds. And man, I thought he could have made a run for a title last year. I don't know if he would have beat Colin Moore or Noah Adams, but he would have made a darn run. The junior had a 14-3 and record last year and just plowed his way through the season, starting off at the beginning when he beat off Kyle Connell at the beginning against Penn State. He also had wins over Nathan Traxler, two wins against him. Uh, Lane Thomas, he beat him of Cal Paul and Greg Bolzak of Clarion. He beat all those guys who were all top uh, top ranked guys. Very impressive wins there. And, you know, his biggest loss last year was to Colin Moore, but that was an 11-9 loss. So very close. And you could have seen him doing... Um, doing a number at Nationals. I think you'll see that this year coming into his junior season. Now, 285 pounds. Uh, this is the big one. This is the big one for Arizona State. Have the number two recruiting class, uh, number two in the recruiting class of 2019, which Arizona State had one of the top recruiting classes during the uh, last couple of years. There's very solid recruits coming in. And Colton Schultz, as the heavyweight, the redshirt freshman coming in is going to make some waves. Uh, let it be known, he's going to make some waves. He's a four-time Colorado State champion, winning Reno tournament champions in high school, which is one of his best tournaments as far as the high school season. But outside of that, he won a junior world bronze medal. He's a cadet world champion. And most impressively, which is important here, he beat Mason Paris in high school. Mason Paris, one of the top guys, of course, at heavyweight, uh, between him, Gable Stevenson, Anthony Cassiope, we'll see Colin Schultz make some waves coming into this season. He also gave Seth Nevels his first high school loss. Nevels, of course, of Penn State may or not be in the lineup this year. And I think important here too is uh, throughout his four-year career in high school, 15 out of 16 of his matches at the state tournament were by bonus point. I believe they were even by pin. What an impressive season he is going to have uh, is Colton Schultz. Now, Arizona State overall, I think they can have a very uh, solid season uh, with all these guys, with a lot of these new guys coming in. It's going to uh, you know, be tough for them maybe at the start, but once they start coming together, they'll be a solid team. Now, if you're looking for another lineup preview, I recommend you check this video out right here. This is a lineup preview. I go deep in every single week on these lineups, so make sure you check that out. You're not going to want to miss it.